Okay, so here's a quick tip on effectively and dynamically retouching your photographs that you've taken. Number one and most importantly, take a good photo from the beginning. Get your settings right, get focus right, get everything right. It makes working on the photo so much easier. So don't think you can just take a crappy photo and make it brilliant. It doesn't work like that. You've got to take a great photo and then make it awesome. And as you can see here, he has a beautiful family shot. And what I'm going to do is just work through my editing process and show you a simple number two rule, which is keep it simple. Small changes, subtle changes will dynamically enhance your photo. You don't want to overdo it because it'll just make your photo look overdone and over photoshopped. People will just be able to tell it's photoshopped straight out the bat. So you want to make it look as realistic as possible. And here we go. So I'm going to start. I'm not going to go through the techniques that I use and how I do them. But I'm going to show you the percentages and how subtle changes can actually make such a big impact. So firstly, we're going to use what I call a creative rule, which is actually a two-rule conversion from Calvin Hollywood. And just subtle changes you'll see make big differences. And then you can see there's quite a dynamic change. You can see the beginning and after difference. So I add a layer mask, fill it with a 70% black full, which you'll see now has taken most of the effect away. So now what I'm going to do is take a paintbrush at a 40% opacity. It's really nice and low, but just enough to paint in an effect. And what I like to do is paint over the clothing and details in the clothing to highlight those and to just make them pop and give them that, that added edge. Obviously keeping on a white brush, you can see as I painted in, you virtually see nothing happen, but now when you turn the layer on and off, you can see there's a subtle change to that image. Now we're gonna monster merge, control shift alt E, and then I'm gonna rename it 8020, which is just something I've picked up also from Calvin Hollywood, which goes to say that 80% of my work is done in this image of retouching the image. I love my shadows and highlights, so I'm going to create another monster merge, and I'm going to convert to a shadow highlights layer, and you can see there's a nice big change there, and I've already preset my settings, which I prefer my shadows and highlights to be. Now here comes the interesting part. I don't want it to look like that. I'm going to take it down to 40%. Subtle change. You can see just small change in the photograph to balance it out. And then I'm going to merge down on my 80-20 layer. I always merge everything back into that layer. Just makes it easy for me to edit. Go vibrance layer, I push this quite far up to about 40, just to bring in the mid-range color tones so that we can enhance those. And then if you need just a slight bit of saturation onto that. Now you can see it's just really bringing those subtle color tones out just softly. And then I merge that down. What I'm gonna do is take my history brush onto screen 20%, also a small change. And this is where I just paint in some of the faces. Just if the lighting is not fantastic, just paint it in. And you can see there it gives them a nice little glow to the face. And my 80-20 level, I want some more little blues there. So I'll take my saturation. Let's go to the blues layer. Just slide it up slightly. Small change. And you can see there it pops the blue. And I'll merge it down. Now I'm going to go to a contrast layer, which is a contrast via Unsharp White Mask. Also plenty of videos on the web, and I've picked it up from Calvin Hollywood and his settings. You'll see Calvin Hollywood's my, my, my idol. He's a phenomenal photographer and retoucher. And my layer mask at the bottom, Smart Filter Mask, I'm going to add a 70% black layer to that. And then just, again, just take my brush, 40%, and just Peyton over the creases and folds in the clothing just to pop them out a bit. Simple. Done. Then I'm going to go to a romantic glow or a glow effect which is just a combination of screen and soft layers that are blended with Glage and Burr and I'm going to pull this right down to 30% just so that you can just see a little bit of glow there. From there let's just sharpen the image and I use high pass effect to sharpen and that looks pretty good but I always just pull it down just to about 60% obviously if you see it over sharpening just bring it down even further down to 40% you just want subtle little changes to this okay so I'm going to do a double vignette what I call a double vignette I'm going to just highlight the couple or the subject matter of my photo and then I've created an action here which will invert it change the feathering to 500 
and then just slightly darken the outside that is still just a bit dark for me so I'm going to come in change it to 40% I'm going to do an outside vignette there we go and an inside vignette just to lighten the subject matter and this, what this draws does is it draws you into the photograph creates that highlight on the actual subject and as you can see now there we go it's done quick easy and if you go now to the image you can actually see the difference with all these subtle little changes small little changes to the images you can see how dynamic it's made the image and that's why it's so important do not overdo your images keep it simple